Hi all, welcome back to our channel ML4 Analytics. I'm Nitesh and in this video today we will be seeing that how we can check whether a given number is a palindrome or not. For that today I will be presenting you three solutions in Python. Before we start with the solutions, first of all let's check what a palindrome number is. So any number which when reversed is still equivalent to its original form then we can say that that given number is a palindrome number now for example let's see 1 2 3 2 1 which when reversed is still equivalent to its original form thus it is a palindrome number now for example minus 1 2 2 1 once we reverse it, it will be like 1, 2, 2, 1, hyphen. Now, this number is not equivalent to its original form because this initial minus sign is now at the end of the number. So, this number is not a palindrome. And another example could be like 1, 2, 3, 4, which when reversed will be like 4, 3, 2, 1. Again, not equivalent to its original form another one would be like 100 it will be 001 which in literal form will be only one so all these examples are not palindromes and for the numbers which are actually palindrome are like 1 2 3 2 1 1 2 2 1 1 2 1 now since you have the knowledge that what is a palindrome number, let's begin with our solutions. In providing you the solution, there can be two scenarios. The first one, you are allowed to convert the given number to string. The second one is you are not allowed to convert the given number to string. By number, I mean only the integer values, not float values during this session. For the second solution, I will be providing you two solutions. The one, the most expensive one, or you can say the worst case scenario, and another one which is the most effective solution which I can come up with. So guys, without wasting time, let's start with our solutions. So this is our program starting with the top line. This is a list of numbers for which we will be running our program to check whether they are palindrome or not. Also, I will be timing all these methods or the solutions that which one provided as the best scenario or the best time for them so we can check whether our assumption is correct or not, whether the given solution is best or not. Now, for the first solution where we are allowed to convert the given string to number, let's see that. So, we have a class for palindrome. And this is the solution one where we have created a method called is palindrome string conversion. The first condition is this one. It says if the given value is negative or the given number is divisible by 10 and it is not equals to 0, then the given number is not a palindrome. And this condition is one of the common condition which you will be seeing in all the three solutions okay now going to the next step here we are converting our given value or the integer value to the string using the str function of python the next step would be to compare the reverse of the string with our given value so instead of converting the whole string into a reverse of using some int reverse function or adding some loop what we can simply do is write the string add some square brackets over here then colon colon and a minus one what it means is read the string from its last point or the last character value then we are comparing this to the original value if these two values are not equivalent that is the reverse of the number is not equivalent to the original number then that is not a palindrome and hence return false otherwise always return true through this function 
we will check for all the numbers later on during this session so for that we have created multiple functions over here we will come back to them later on so this was for the basic understanding that this is the main code now for the solution 2 this one shows the most effective solution that how you can check whether the given number is a palindrome or not considering you are not allowed to convert that number to a string before we start with the effective solution let's see what's the expensive solution or the worst case scenario so that we can compare both of them so here is the most expensive solution with us the method name is is palindrome number only expensive here the expensive keywords is for justifying that this method is the worst case scenario one okay so what we are doing over here is first of all we are saving the original value which is passed to this method to in a new variable original value then the same condition which we saw in the solution one the given number should not be negative or should not be divisible by 10 if that is the case then that is not a palindrome considering the number was not divisible by zero or the sorry the number was not zero now uh, the main loop the question the next question in your mind would be how we can reverse a number for that we have this loop and the condition for that loop is the value or the original value should remain greater than zero till then keep running the loop the default value for reverse number is zero then what we are doing is we are multiplying it with 10 and then adding the remainder of this original value to that number and then reducing the original value by a digit so by for that what we are doing is divide the number with 10 and keeping only the integer part so that we have left with only two digit number in case we are giving a three digit number for example the number is one two three initially this is the original value then at line number 43 what would happen is it will be like 0 star 10 plus the remainder of 1 to 3 divided by 10 would be 3 only so it will be equivalent to 3 then the value at this moment is the original value at this line at the line 44 is 12 next line it is 3 star 10 plus the remainder 2 it will be 32 and the original value will be like 1 only now it will be 3 2 star 10 plus 1 and then it will be like 3 to 1 and the final value will be 0 at this moment the loop will exit over here and the reversed number value will be like 3 to 1 so what's left is compare the reverse number with the original value which is saved in this variable if those are equal then the given number is a palindrome otherwise the given number is not a palindrome this is the worst case scenario now you would be thinking why this is the first case scenario it is the worst case because what we have done over here is we are traversing through all the digits of the given value to reverse that number and then compare it and for example if you were given a number which have had let's say 100 digits then you would be traversing it 100 times this loop would be running for 100 times which is not the most cost effective way now how we can reduce those loops or how we can make it more effective here comes the effective solution is palindrome number only no prefix or suffix with expensive this condition is still same or common in all three methods the only major difference you will see is this one this condition what it says is keep the loop running until the given original value is greater than reverse number 
So instead of doing a complete reversal of the number, what we can do is we can do a partial reversal. For example, if we are given a number like 1, 2, 2, 1. Now, if we reverse only the last two digits, 2, 1, they will come out to be 1, 2. And if we compare only these two digits, the first one of the original value, first two digits, and this reverse number, we can say that the given number is a palindrome. Now, for the odd digit values, let's say 1, 3, 2, 1, the reverse number will be like 1, 2, 3, and loop will exit at this moment as the original value would be like 12. Now, if we compare this one with 12, of course, it would say they are not equal or they are not palindrome. So for that, what we have done is we have added one more condition over here. Divide the reverse number with 10 and keep only the integer value. So again, it will be like 12 being compared with first two digits, that is 12. And hence, that says it is a palindrome number. So how it reduced the things? You can clearly see that. Instead of traversing all the five digits, what we did over here was we traversed only the three digits if the number was an odd number. If the number was even, we only traversed half of the digits, which is a great improvement over this one. Let's say if we have had a number having 100 digits, here in the first case, we were going through all the 100 digits, but in the best case, we are only going through 50 digits of that number. So efficiency is increased highly over here. Now, now you would be thinking, okay, all this talk is fine over here. Let's see what are the results if we time them. So let's time those functions over here. Here, you can see for the best case or where this you were allowed to convert the number to a string the best time is 2.6 microseconds then for the second case the most effective one the run time is 4.6 microseconds and for the expensive one the run time is 6.13 microseconds and this is not just for a single run it is for 100,000 runs, I should say. So guys, if we can clearly see that how much effective this second solution is for us, how better it is. Now you would be thinking, let's see whether they are working fine or not. So I'm just uncommenting some print statements over here so you can see the results for yourself that yes, our methods are correct and they are working fine. In the meantime, I would say always try to find a solution for any problem where you don't have to traverse through each and every digit. That thing will always provide you the best scenario. Okay, so let's run these changes. This one, this one, and of course this one as well as we uncommented few things over here. Now let's go and run this one. Okay, so we have the results. This is for the string one. 12321 one is palindrome. 1221 one, palindrome. 1234 false, of course. Negative numbers, false, false. 121 one, a palindrome. Now for the next one, 123, true, 1212, true. So now for these three, it's false. That is as expected. And same answers are over here. So my suggestion for you guys is, please go through this video again, if you haven't understood that what we did over here and why we did that. Or you can just create some examples for yourself and do some manual traverse on those numbers. Then you will get the better picture of that. Also, whenever you are working on such problem statements, always try to find a solution where you can reduce the number of traversals or reduce the number of loops happening. That will always provide you a better solution, better answer, or I should say the most cost-effective solution. And 
these are the things which all the companies want from us all the industry want from us in schools you would have learned this solution or maybe this one but in rare scenarios only you would have seen this one so you always have to focus on the best things not the worst case scenarios so keep that thing in your mind and let's continue with this course where i will be providing you such scenarios later on as well many problem statements are coming in next videos so stay tuned with us with ml4 analytics also you can check our channel for multiple power bi videos as your cloud if you are interested in those so guys stay tuned please comment subscribe like we would appreciate all those things from your side also you can add some comments like which kind of videos you are looking from us we will try to create them next time thank you and have a nice day